Hi, I'm Rifka of Chayoga Thrifka, and I am four months post shoulder surgery. And this is my update on that. I meant to make a video actually about a month ago to give the three month mark because my surgeon had told me it would take um, around three months before I could start doing yoga again. And he was right, by the way. But here's what they don't tell you is that it's not easy and it's not because, oh, I'm rusty, I haven't done it. I'm actually very impressed with the um, minimal loss of flexibility that I'm experiencing, but it's just still exhausting because I don't have strength back. I actually, now this is four months because a month ago I was not able to go like this or ooh, around, this is oh, mm -hmm. tender, get my hand behind my back or even this is my new party trick. This is actually one of my um, exercises. So all of those movements that I just did are not only brand new, they are movements I have not done for months now. It's been months and months, I think maybe even a year since I fully extended this arm all the way up to the ceiling because the instability always felt like I was gonna pull it out, you know, yank the shoulder out of its socket while reaching for the sky. So all of these movements are really nice and new, but my physical strength in my arms is gone, in both arms actually, because who knew your shoulders affect every single workout you do? Um, you probably knew that. For me, it seems to have been a very surprising fact because I, everything I do when I walk, it uses the shoulder. When I cook in the kitchen, it uses the shoulder. And even four months where I have a lot more energy, I'm, still limited by what I can do. If I decide I want to spend all morning cooking in the kitchen, then I cannot clean the house later in the day. Whereas before I could do both, albeit it would have been exhausting, but I literally cannot do both. And if I do cook in the kitchen, it sacrifices energy that I have to give proper attention and care to my kids. So there's a huge balance that I have to a balanced scale that I have to constantly shift around. Um, but instead of big bowls, it's like these little tiny cups. And it's like, okay, I can have one task, but then, you know, I, I hope you get what I'm saying. And that was surprising. And this is, that's what this vlog is about, is what surprised me after shoulder surgery is this. And about a week ago, I realized the best analogy I can think of, and is when we when I came back from the hospital, I called it my new shoulder, like my baby shoulder. I have a shoulder baby. And I'm four months post-shoulder partum, I've coined it, which I know is not accurate, get over it. Um, it just, it's, this experience is reminding me of when I had my second child and the exhaustion I felt and the energy, the balance of energy. And then I was working in an office afterwards. This time I'm doing Zoom school because of Corona. So, there's that there's life differences but ultimately it was that same amount of energy and balance of what i can do what i can't do and <laughs> correlates to how well i can sleep at night um and that was really surprising for me uh, and I'm, I'm continuously reminding myself this is completely normal my physical therapist told me right after the surgery that it could take me up to a year to get back to where I was and looked at her in shock. And I said, well, the doctor said three to six months. And she said, yeah, but I'm the physical therapist. <laughs> He'll tell you when you're completely healed and I'll tell you when your physical capabilities are back. And I had that, uh, cons not a consultation, I had a follow up yesterday with my physical therapist because backtrack, I now do a group therapy. So instead of individual sessions with the therapist for half an hour, twice a week I go, um, for about an hour and I just work on the strength using the machines they have because I don't have TRX bands. I don't have weight machines in my own home and they check the position and they advise, etc. cetera. Um, so every once a month or every three weeks, I need to then follow up privately with a physical therapist to evaluate where I am. And she said that also to me just so i'm four months right i thought i would be where i am now i thought i would be here two months ago so shocker so four months and she's telling me you know what it's going to be a few more months until you regain 
your physical strength because there's so much that I've lost. And I showed off a picture of me doing an arm balance and I was like, I was here a year ago. When will I get back here? Um, I'm really looking forward to that. But she reminded me like it takes time. Um, the, the right shoulder has just lost muscle mass because I don't use it as much. I don't use my arms as much, but my left shoulder, you know, they literally cut the muscles. So I'm still getting, uh, cramps in the bicep that just happen. Um, perfectly normal. I have a tendon or something that's been pinching. I actually had an MRI to check and I'll have my follow up with the, um, surgeon next week or in two weeks from now to see but I just always come back to what surprises me what I can do I do have new exercises that I do at home previously most of them were to increase mobility and I will continue the ones that I have but I have new exercises to increase the strength in my arms and in my shoulders because that is what's holding me back right now and I never thought I would say this, but I really want to start doing plank again and push-ups again and all of those good things. And I'm really looking forward to being able to do full push-ups and not tricep push-ups because while I love me some tricep push-ups, I've always had the bicep has always given me trouble with the uh, full wide push-ups. So I'm really looking forward to that. And then the other thing that I'm noticing, and this is as we're going into change of seasons it's still very very hot where i live but we're slowly transitioning so there's a, a change in the feel of the weather it's still like 80 degrees 90 degrees but i'm comfortable with a fan and now when i'm cold when i'm in an ac environment my shoulder feels um i don't know what's the word like tight almost where i'm i'm often literally warming my shoulder with my hand and rotating it because the warmer it is the better the mobility is. So that's an interesting development. The thing about pain is that bigger pains come first, right? So I deal with the big pains and then the small pains and the small annoyances start to come out and come to light. And that's what's happening, which is encouraging because it means that I'm on this uh, more, um, what's the word? I'm thinking about the word in Hebrew and I can't think of the word in English. Um, but the, like a higher level sort of, and this is, um, lost my train of thought. Another thing that surprised me a little bit, a lot of it, a lot, a lot of it is how frustrated I would still feel now. I really gave myself mentally only six weeks you know before uh before the surgery i had told everyone well okay i'm gonna be in bed for four weeks and then probably four to six weeks i'll be able to start tutoring again and i'll be back to this job and that job and i was going to reopen my studio after six weeks and go back to teaching okay maybe not 10 classes a week but definitely like six seven and then corona hit and my studio closed temporarily um and i'm so grateful ish not grateful for corona i'm not grateful for the um closure of my studio but i am glad the silver lining of it is that i didn't have to rush back to teaching because now teaching two classes a week is enough that's what i can do part of it is that division of energy that i was saying that if i spend the morning teaching my kids and then resting and then attempting to get them outside for some kind of physical activity or going grocery shopping or all the daily house necessities and not even that, a minimum of that, I don't have energy to be teaching, you know, twice a day or, you know, five times a week, six times a week. So I wish my studio could be open more. I wish I could teach classes more, but at the same time, it ended up being a blessing in disguise, not you know, not a disguise I would have asked for, but a blessing in disguise that my studio is temporarily closed so I can really focus on rehabbing. And I do fluctuate emotionally up and down about this, that, um, you know, things no one tells you, but, you know, you, we shouldn't be surprised by. Our moods get really affected by our physical capabilities. And I get very frustrated when um, I can't, 
eat properly because I'm just too drained or I'm too emotionally stressed and they're the sacrifices that I keep talking about these balances what I'm choosing I know I'm choosing the best things that I need to but I'm sad about what I have to sacrifice so for example I really like to eat really well smaller portions all of those things but I'm not because I'm working on physical rehab and being emotionally happy and available for my kids and you know we're we're five people stuck in a house and my kids never went back to school and so the the balance of the house I, I feel like this video is sponsored by the word balance um and the body part shoulder but it's it all centers around everyone's emotional well-being um pointing up instead of down so has sacrificing the energy to make a salad or even be interested in eating a salad is very difficult it's something that i constantly judge myself on and then constantly judge myself for judging myself and then dialing it back and saying okay but what's the good in my life um you know what am i happy about um, what's made this sacrifice worth it and then when I do things with my kids and I'm not cranky about it or when I um, you know have my house yeah I sweep my house let's say and I'm happy that my house is swept then I realize okay the sacrifice is worth it and I know it's temporary and that was another thing is knowing things are temporary makes it a lot easier to pass this is just a phase and this goes all the way back to the whole post shoulder partum analogy thing is that was a phase I went through I dealt with it you know like it is eight now so very clearly I am sleeping at night and you know more or less and I do have energy and I don't she doesn't need me as much as she did when she was four months old so I can be more of my own person and it's the same with my shoulder it still needs me um, when I sleep at night I still have a pillow supporting my arm I could probably sleep without it, but the the muscles are weak, so I'm still using it for support when I'm on my side. I don't sleep on my left shoulder yet. Um, I'm still either on the right or on the back, but that, I went down that train of thought, back with you, I think. Um, right so it's it's things like that where i know there will come a day when i can go back to sleeping on my left side or i can say no more pillow altogether and it'll be okay but here four months post-surgery is not that day and that's fine that's just where i am and that's the the update if i could sum you know after this whole if, you, if you're still with me um if i could sum it up all in one sentence it would be that at four months you will hit a place of acceptance of not being where you thought you would be and acknowledging what you need to do to balance your life better um, or not even better balance your life at all and it'll probably be different than what you expect no one is bounced back from surgery like this after four months and there are different surgeries there are different things but the shoulder impacts so much movement more than you might realize really even even when i dislocated my shoulder i was still more mobile than i am now i was like okay I'm, even in a sling i was more active after shoulder dislocation than i was after shoulder surgery so throwing it out there for you who might be contemplating sur surgery or getting surgery or had surgery this is where you'll probably be at you might be at you might not you might say go forget it you're wrong that's okay but you there's a good chance you're going to be where i am at four months being like i feel like crap i don't feel like crap I don't feel like crap you shouldn't feel like crap you yeah, inner monologue um and that's that's the update that's where i'm at anyway i'll see you next time bye